Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, I'm starting a new series. I'm going to go from the Earth to Ganymede. It's one of the moons of Jupiter. In previous videos, I've gone from uh, Mars to some of the different moons of Jupiter, and I, th I went to Saturn at one point as well. Um, I haven't yet gone from Earth to uh, any of the outer planets except for the time that I did the whole Grand Tour. And in that video, obviously, we didn't actually stop on any of the moons. So to do, th to do something a bit different, I thought I would go from uh, Earth to Ganymede. Now, in this particular video, we're going to use, in this series, rather, we're going to use the HCLV launcher again. This is the same launcher that I used when I did the Earth to Mercury flight. Uh, the, dif the difference here is that you're looking at a very different setup. This setup's obviously a lot better looking. Because I'm here at the Carl Sagan Space Center, in the Earth to Mercury vid video that I did, uh, for the sake of somewhat for the sake of simplicity, uh, but also for the sake of being able to show the whole setup on video, I chose to use the uh, uh, the Cape Canaveral launch site, you know, KSC. That way, if people wanted to follow along, they could do so more easily without having to also install a whole space complex. Uh, but I wanted to make things look better, simply, in this video, so I am using the uh, Carl Sagan Space Center. Because it has a launcher... Um, a launch pad that is more suited for the HCLV. You can see that it clearly just looks a whole lot better. The launcher isn't floating above the pad or it's not sitting, you know, to where it's sunken inside the pad. Actually, I guess while I'm saying that, I should switch camera views over to the big view now. So this launch pad just looks a whole lot better and it has these night lights and everything, so it's just pretty cool. Now, I have done a, quite a bit of pre-setup, which I normally don't which I normally don't do. I normally record the whole mission setup, uh, but I just I, I thought I would just you know do all the setup off camera so that we could basically just jump right into the flight this time. Uh, maybe you'll like that. Maybe you don't. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. But we're going to. Instead of taking the XR2 out to Jupiter and landing on Ganymede, which off the top of my head I don't know if that's possible, what we're going to do is launch from uh, from the space center and we're going to rendezvous with the aero freighter. It's our I already have the aero freighter set up in orbit, so let's actually take a look at that. And I also this is something else I did also just for the sake of you know, doing things a bit different. Uh, the only possible downside of using the aerofreighter for this flight is that we don't have to concern ourselves with fuel. And I say that's a downside just for the fact that sometimes, you know, managing fuel and all of that is sometimes part of the, you know, that's part of the fun. But when you use the aerofreighter, you know, it just, it's default setting without even adding any additional fuel. You know, it has close to 100 kilometers uh, per second worth of delta V. So, you know, fuel is just not a concern. I have the aerofreighter in high orbit. It's uh, 20,000 kilometers from the center of Earth, so somewhere around uh, 13,630 kilometers from the surface. And I actually need to remember that number. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go back to uh, the launch pad here and select the HCLV. And let's kind of get things set up. Now let me go back to uh, real time because the, the timing on this one worked out and this was actually kind of a coincidence. I didn't plan this, but I've got the uh, timing worked out so that we're crossing, the aero freighter is going to be crossing our launch site. Uh, its orbital plane is going to be crossing our launch site here right away. So it's time to go. And I didn't actually plan that. It just worked out. So just by selecting uh, the aero freighter and setting my display to, you know, orbit plane, I can see here that the orbit plane of the aerofreighter is crossing our launch site. And if we bring up orbit plane MFD and target the aerofreighter, then we can see that we're 500 and about 15 seconds away from the node. 
The HCLV gets to orbit, I've noticed, quite a bit quicker than, say, the Space Shuttle or the Delta Glider. So normally I would leave when the time to the node is about 310 seconds to 315 seconds. But since the HCLV gets to orbit faster, um, and I don't actually know what the timing is, I'm going to leave a little bit later. You typically want to leave when the uh, time to node is half of uh, the time that it takes to reach, ha or the time that it takes to reach half orbital velocity. So if it takes 310 seconds to reach half orbital velocity, that's when you want to launch. And I don't know how long it takes the HCLV to reach half orbital velocity. I haven't, I haven't timed it yet. So I'm just going to kind of guess about. Uh, so we'll leave around 250 seconds. Yeah, I think that'll be good. So the only thing to do here is uh, warp time forward, but let me just think about things for a minute, if there's anything else I need to plan. I guess we can turn off external cooling on the XR2 at this point. So let me select the XR2. Press F8, we'll go to the lower panel and turn Using off external cooling. O2. And this is not an expert configuration. This is a default configuration of the XR2. Uh, the expert configuration probably would have been fine because basically all we're going to use the XR2 for is to rendezvous with the aero freighter. And then it's not going to really have a whole lot of use after that. So fuel isn't really too much of a concern in the XR2 either. But let's go back to the HCLV. And I hate that when you switch vessels and orbiter it forgets everything that you've done so i'm reselecting the aero freighter and we'll go back to orbit plane and retarget the aero freighter okay now let's start warping time forward so we can get closer to the time to node and begin our launch and before we get too close to that point let me also bring up the hyperion control autopilot we're going to go ahead and use the autopilot when I went from Earth to Mercury, I started to use the autopilot and then decided not to only for the fact that I didn't realize that you could control the yaw, which is in, for the sake of the autopilot, it's the heading. You can input new headings on the fly. So we're, we'll go ahead and use the autopilot for this launch. Now the target apogee, Again, the aero freighter is in orbit around 13,600 kilometers, something like that. I do know that the that this launcher can get an apogee up to about 17,000 kilometers, so we're fine. We can definitely reach that target. But I'm going to lowball it a little bit so that we so that our rendezvous doesn't take forever. Let's go with. Uh, Let's go with an apogee of just 13,000. We'll be that'll be about 630 kilometers below below the Let me also look at map MFD real quick. Where is the aero freighter at in its orbit? It's back here a ways. So it needs to catch up to us. But our orbit will be so elliptical that it won't really matter. So I, I don't really know. Like ideally, we would we, it'd be cool if we could just launch straight to the aero freighter. But getting all that timing worked out is beyond the scope of what I'm trying to accomplish here. So we may have to orbit the planet a couple of times, and we are leaving about a day prior. I've got a 24-hour window here to actually rendezvous with the aero freighter before we plan on going out to Jupiter. But the launch window for Jupiter is pretty broad, so it doesn't it's not nearly as picky as like trying to go to Mercury. Okay, so let's go back to line plane so we can watch the time to no countdown. And again, I'm just trying to decide on that target APA. Also, I have already figured out the launch azimuth using Space Calculator's V.2. Um, I recently did a video on and my absolute beginner guide on how to use this tool but basically we put in the target inclination that we get from orbit MFD if we target the aero freighter. 
and we have the equatorial frame, so the inclination 38.77, I've got that set here. And then we get the launch latitude for MAP MFD, and the velocity from orbit MFD, and then the target's velocity from orbit MFD, and we calculate that, and we get a launch azimuth of 47.2. So let's put that in here. And let's go back to align plane so we can watch the time to go, and it's, it's time to go. So I'll go ahead and hit launch. And we'll switch over to surface HUD rather than having that on orbit. And I'm not using the autopilot launcher just to be lazy. <clears throat> I'm using it uh, just to sort of add to the realism of the flight, you know, again, manual launches are fun, but sometimes uh, it's not especially realistic, you know, to do manual launches, so, um, and I always do manual launches, so I just thought for once I would go ahead and use the autopilot. And it does require a little bit of input on the user side, again, because we have to, we have to watch our yaw position a little bit, so I will have to make adjustments to the heading as we go, but as a, a here at the beginning at least, I think the autopilot will handle everything just fine. So all I'm, all I'm watching is the relative inclination to make sure that's coming down, and I want to keep an eye also on the time to the node. If this starts to increase, which it actually looks like it may start increasing, it is. So now I'm going to make a slight adjustment on the heading, and we're going to go to uh, 48 degrees. Let me think about that for a second. Is that right? Or do I need to go the other way? Okay, it looks like I was backwards on that, so we will we'll go to 45. So because because I need the time to the node to come down. Actually, I guess I was correct the first time. I just didn't go far enough with it. Yeah, now the time to the node is slowing down, but it's not enough. So we'll go 52. Now that does decrease the rate a bit, but the point here is that we need the time to the node to come down, because otherwise the uh, positional indicator it will spin around this way, and we would rather it get closer to the node, not farther away. So I think that just means I may have launched a little early. So instead of, because again, this launcher gets to its uh, half velocity quite fast, I should have actually timed it right here so I would know. But you can see we're almost you know, we're, we're almost half target velocity already. But the uh, time to node's still counting down. And our relative inclination is 3.35. Okay, so I'll just take a look at the external view, see how things are coming along. Unfortunately, I missed the separation of the boosters. That's a pretty cool effect that it has when the boosters come come out. They have this uh, uh, like an RCS or an engine thrust effect, and it looks pretty cool. Okay, relative inclination down to 2.8, and time to node still counting down. So I'd say we've got a pretty good heading here at this point. probably swing the heading around a bit here in a moment because the time to node is now getting pretty low and we've still got a bit to go on that so instead of a heading of 52 we'll come to 51 at this point that'll increase the rate which will speed up the uh, relative inclination coming down let's go a little bit more than that even let's go all the way to 48 at this point Now we're getting back closer to our original figure of 47.2, which was the launch azimuth that I calculated using the uh, calculator. You can see that's still counting down. It's, eh, it's actually going to turn around on me, so I'm going to go back a bit. 49. Relative inclination counting down, time to note counting down. And I believe this will be fine, so let's take a look at Orbit MFD, switch projection to ship, distance to PEA, APA, 
and you can see how our orbit's progressing. We're now one degree off, so we're pretty well lined up now with our target plane. And the, the time to note starting to increase. So I'm going to come back to the Hyperion control and move the heading out a bit to prevent the time to note from increasing. Probably might even have to go a little bit more than that even. We'll see. But the relative inclination is down now to uh, a little over a half degree. And we're almost at the end of the ride, so let's go ahead down to less than a half a degree so it's, it's acceptable it would be pre preferable to have that to point 2 0 or better but again we're coming up almost to the end here and there we are engine cutoff now let me think about this for a second I've got to decide if I want to circularize this orbit now or rather you know circularize it out here or not first order of business we're going to be coming up to the node here so we'll go ahead and finish the alignment and we know that that's going to be orbit plus because we're coming up to the descending node switch to orbit earth let's uh yeah let's go ahead and take care of this first and then i'll remember to switch over to the xr2 and open the radiator while that autopilot's settling actually i don't want to switch because then i'll have to set this all back up Probably should have done that a little bit sooner because it's going to take the autopilot long enough to settle that I'll be really close to the time to the node. But this is going to be a really quick burst, obviously, less than one second. Coming up here in just five seconds, uh, but we'll start it a little bit early because we're not going to use the full power of the main engines. So there we go, relative inclination coming down, and it's zero. So we're good there. Now I will switch to the XR2. Press F8 so I get access to this panel. Start the radiator, or rather start the APU. Open the radiator. And we've only been gone for seven minutes and 30 seconds so far. So we, yeah, we get to orbital velocity pretty quickly using the HCLV as the launcher. Okay, APU off to save that fuel. Switch back to this vessel. And now we've got to target our stuff again because it forgets. Okay, now let me think about the rendezvous here. Guess what I can do, rather than worrying about coming all the way around to Apoapsis and circularizing the orbit, which is what the uh, currently the Hyperion control is waiting on that event because you can see the, the autopilot's still active. So it's waiting to get up to Apoapsis to circularize. But let me check Transex first. And we'll do an adjustment here to select ships. Go plus to select the AR01. And while I'm in view setup, let me check graph projection. We'll go to focus. I like that better for this purpose, and we'll see what we can do about setting up a maneuver here. So maneuver mode on, and we need to extend our orbit out just a little bit more. Now. Moving the clock forward a bit to see. Okay, let's 
do a bit more prograde because our orbit's not, not out far enough yet. Actually, we probably won't need prograde if we're going to do the burn all the way out there. We'll probably be better off using outward, possibly. Yeah, maybe not. Doesn't look like it. Okay, so prograde it will be, or yeah, prograde. So a little bit of luck there. We're going to be getting out to Apoapsis close to the time to rendezvous. We've got our closest approach down to just a couple kilometers here. Yeah, just meters at that point, so... And we're saying we want to do that burn at... Okay, so not that far in the future. Okay, so we're going to turn off the Hyperion control because we're not going to be doing... We're not going to be using its autopilot to do, to do the orbit circularization, so let's press LCH and that obviously disables the autopilot. And we still have quite a bit of delta V left in this part, so we'll go ahead and take advantage of that. Let me press select and bring up burn time calculator just to get an idea. Yeah, we've, uh, we've only got 174 meters left. Not as much as I thought. Okay, that being the case, we'll press Control J. Then we'll eat. We'll just detach from the XR2, and now we'll select the XR2. And we'll inherit the plan from the HCL, the one we just set up. That way we don't have to reset up that. And we'll use a little bit of translation to get away. Rotation translation. From the HCLV launcher, and that launcher will go around and eventually it'll burn up in the atmosphere. It probably, its current trajectory has it coming just down to 144 kilometers above the surface. That's not gonna be low enough to have it enter the atmosphere. If I wanna have it enter the atmosphere, what I can do, I'm not gonna bother, but at when the HCLV reaches apogee, I could use that little bit of delta V that it has left to lower its periapsis all the way down into the atmosphere. If I think about it, I'll do it, but it's not a big deal. Okay, so now back with Transex. Let's finish setting up this rendezvous. We do a base update real quick, just that everything's current. And a bit of an adjustment here on these variables because two kilometers is close, but not close enough. Okay, so it looks like a little bit less prograde. And that gets us obviously within just a few meters and that's definitely close enough. And when is that burn going to be? 8,000 seconds. So we'll need to warp time forward quite a bit and then do an adjustment because at 8,000 seconds with Transex, uh, things will change quite a bit. Hey, we're at 24 minutes on the video, so let's go ahead and warp time forward. I think we've still got time to uh, complete this first burn, and then we'll end this part and go on to a new part. Warp time forward a little slowly here at first, just to make sure that we're going to separate without crashing into the HCLV. Rotation. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, we're on different paths. All right, uh, we'll go to a thousand. We'll get close to the time to begin the burn. Closer, I should say. 
Again, down to at least 600 seconds, which is 10 minutes. And that's close enough. Now we'll go back to real time. We'll go back to view maneuver and we'll hit update and things didn't change very much at all. Sometimes when you go forward by, you know, two, three, four thousand seconds, the, uh, and, then you, and then you update, you'll notice that your closest approach will suddenly go from, you know, 50 meters or 200 meters all the way out to several kilometers, in which case you want to do an update, or rather, in which case you want to update your prograde and everything. But now that we're just 600 seconds away from the time to the berm, we'll, we'll see if we can get our closest approach even lower. Not that it matters a whole lot because we're so close as it is, but and probably just a tiny bit of a uh, plane change or outward will get us even better. Looks like a little bit of plane change, and this is less than a meter, so it's really close. <clears throat> and we've got our closest approach all the way down to just three meters. That's good enough. I'm not going to bother with it beyond that. And it's going to be mostly prograde, so let's get the XR2 facing prograde. And let's target the aero freighter as well. I'm actually noticing this burn will be slightly less than uh, the best efficiency that we could have had because we passed apoapsis and apoapsis would have been the ideal time to raise the other side of our orbit so this won't be the best efficiency and I guess I also missed the opportunity to lower the uh, the, air, the HCLV again that's not really a big thing but you know if I wanted to for example I could select the HCLV Put it into the retrograde position and use just a little bit of fuel that it has left to lower that part of the orbit. And I did miss apoapsis, but I'll still be able to bring this down a bit. This is just a little bit of cleanup so that the launcher will go around and hit the atmosphere. So the HCLV, this piece, it's now in the retrograde position. So whatever fuel it has remaining, you can see that brought the PEA all the way down, you know, well below the surface. So it's going to go around and hit the atmosphere and crash and burn now. But we don't really know where that's at. That could be over a populated area. No concern here, though. Back to the XR2. Turn prograde off because we still have 400 seconds to go. Let's get all the way down to 200 seconds. And just to be picky, we'll check and do a maneuver update one more time at that point. Okay, we're down to 200 seconds, so view over to maneuver. And we'll come around, do a quick update. And we're still just right there, 17 meters away, so we're not going to worry about it. <coughs> View back over to target, make sure we have rotation selected, which we do. Three minutes away from the burn, let's speed that up. Get down to where we're just 30 seconds or so out, and then we'll get our green X adjusted. <clears throat> okay, there we have it. Get rotated. Okay, we're rotated, and let's bring up a uh, burn time calculator and select manual and put in that amount of dv, 375.5. And when it's time to do the burn, we'll just hit the burn button. And burning. We'll let burn time calculator start and stop the engines accordingly. And then I'll just kind of focus on making sure that the green X stays where it needs to be. And we'll do any cleanup that has to be done at the end of the burn. Okay, burn's done. View over to maneuver. Maneuver mode off. And you can see we're 336 meters according to the closest approach.
Translation. If we want, we can play around with translation a little bit. Just to make sure we get, get that as low as we can. And we've got it down to just, you know, four meters and that number's counting down. <clears throat> now it looks like the rendezvous is going to happen after we complete one orbit. So we're going to go all the way around and then rendezvous over there. Now let's select ComNav, press Control i and select the vessel. And then after we get the communication set up, we'll end this part of the video and we'll complete the rendezvous in another part. So what do we have here? We've got a transponder. That's going to be the long range. We'll set that up as the number one. That's going to be 123 even. Then on Nav 2, we've got one free docking port, which is the one that's inside of the aero freighter. And I've never done that docking before, ever. So that will be a new experience for me, where we actually dock inside the ship. Okay, so that's all set up. Now let me make sure I have TransX <clears throat> loaded on one side, because when I hit Control S here, if TransX isn't loaded on one side, then whatever we have set up will be forgotten. So that's done. Go ahead and save that part here. And that will wrap it up for this part. We're just past 30 minutes, so we'll pick it up in the next part. If you like this video, if you like the idea, uh, go ahead and hit the like button down below, please. If you don't like it, hit the don't like. And if you like the content and you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe because I upload new Orbiter videos. My, my, my schedule is w at least one video per week. I really try very hard to keep that schedule. And I've actually kept that schedule for, uh, uh, I think, over a year. I've never missed a week. And a lot of times, if I have a lot going on with Orbiter, I will upload two, possibly even as many as three videos in one week. I don't think I've ever uploaded more than three in one week. Uh, so that's my general schedule. And I also have a Facebook page, so if you like uh, this whole Orbiter stuff and you want to follow what I'm doing, uh, check the link in the description down below so you can get to my Facebook page. And I post all my videos there. I also post additional photos, which you can't obviously show on YouTube. And I put up different articles and other space-related content, things that you don't get to see on YouTube. So check that out as well if you, if you like. And I'll see you in the next part.